And then all of a sudden we hear the Back to the Future theme blaring over the PA system on this police car. My name is Jay Stelker. I'm a uh, student at Georgia Tech. I'm a senior and um, back in high school, my first car was a 1953 Ford Coupe. Rather unusual for a 16, 17, 18 year old at the time, but I grew up around classic cars. Uh, my dad and grandpa have tons of classic cars. My dad's got a Corvette that he's owned for about 38 or 39 years now. And I grew up around that car. It was really a part of the family. And as I kind of got older, I was really looking for a car that was a little bit sportier, had more creature comfort, something that was more comfortable driving on the highway than the Ford. Um, so I put it up for sale and started looking at other, other cars. And I was really wanting to find a car just like my dad, that this car is so special to him, he's held on to it for all these years. I wanted to find a car that I, would, I could never see myself selling. But I wasn't really sure what that was. So I started looking. I looked at you know a couple Corvettes, because of course I had grown up around Corvettes, and looked at everything from like Packards to Corvettes to uh, Porsche 928s, I love those things. But eventually I sort of stopped looking because I thought I would come across a car and when I saw it, I knew that's, I knew that's the car that I would wanna have. And so a few months of just not looking, um, I got an invite to go to this rather well-known car collection in the Tucker area, Tucker, Georgia, and it's called the Stable of Thoroughbreds. And if that doesn't give you indication of how fancy this car collection is, I don't know what does. So we get the invite to go down. This was spring break of my freshman year at Tech. And we walk through the door and the door opens and it's a rather small collection, but this is a quality over quantity situation because you have Duesenbergs, Packards, early Lincolns, all these beautiful pre-war cars, big cars. And like Duesenbergs, those huge pipes coming off the side, it's just, it's amazing. Of course, I was just, you know, blown away by these cars looking around. Off to the side, there was a little workshop area and kind of, I kind of poked my head in there and that's where they maintain the cars. They actually drive these cars weekly. They'll take a Duesenberg and drive it on 78, which is crazy to me, but, but they do it. Um, so they have a little area where they do oil changes and stuff. And in that little area, sitting in the corner was this 1981 DeLorean DMC-12, flat tires, dirt all on top of it, surrounded by just storage and stuff. And I saw that and I'm thinking, what is that doing there? <laughs> I thought, this was the last place that I expected to see a neglected car, let alone a DeLorean. I, I, I hadn't seen one of those cars since I was about six years old, and I, I remember seeing that car. But when I was looking for cars, I wasn't even thinking DeLorean. So I saw the car, and I, I began thinking, that would be a great car to fix up. Um, but it was really kind of risky because when I was selling the Ford, of course, I was in college, I wasn't looking for a project car. I was looking for something that I could just turn the key and drive and enjoy. The DeLorean would be kind of risky to buy because I didn't know anything about working on them. I didn't know if I could get parts. I didn't know if the engine was blown up. Why was the car sitting there? Because the, the tag on it had been registered since 1996. There was a reason that that car got taken off the road. So I, I didn't know. Um, so my dad and grandpa and I, we start negotiating with the, uh, the family of the car collection and trying to buy this car. And uh, a few weeks go by, we eventually uh, arrived on a unusually very low price. And I was like, I gotta do it, gotta buy it. Ended up buying the car and dragging it home on a rollback trailer. I'm in the car riding behind this, this trailer, looking at this DeLorean sitting on the trailer going, did I just buy that? Is that my car? And there's just everybody looking, taking pictures of this car going on the road on this, on this flatbed, still covered in dirt, still flat tires and everything. And then we get it home, unloaded, and then from there, my dad and I spent the next six to eight months ripping the car apart and doing everything. This car needed everything. Because it's stainless steel, the body was fine, because it doesn't rust, but it needed everything else. Um, the engine didn't run, the transmission didn't shift correctly. Um, it took us about six months to get the car running, but it needed brake suspension, it needed the bumpers painted, the interior was just destroyed. Um, it was really a labor of love to get this thing going again. I remember the first time I drove it, it's, it's really interesting to drive a project car for the first time. You work on a car for six or eight months, you've never even driven it, but you feel like you understand every little nut and bolt on that car because you've personally torqued them all to spec. And I get out and drive this car and it's, it's like I'm learning the car all over again. It's sitting there shaking and the transmission not shifting and the, the engine's hesitating and all this, it's making all these noise, but I got the biggest smile on my face because my dad and I had just resurrected this car. And so another maybe six months go on of us continuing to tweak the car, we get it sort of back to show quality almost. And this is when things get really interesting in the car because I wasn't expecting the reaction that I would get out of people with this thing, you know, because the DeLorean is kind of what I like to call one of the most well-known unknown cars. Everybody knows what a DeLorean is. They've seen it on TV and on movies their entire life, but they've never seen one in person. And so one of the first times my dad and I were actually taking the car out to go drive it, we pull into the gas station, 
put gas in it, and this guy pulls up next to us, and we, we got the doors down with the windows up, and he's got his windows up, and he looks at us through the window, and he goes, you're in a DeLorean. And then I look at him, and I open up the door, and he goes, whoa, watching the door go up. And uh, I get out of the car and shake hands, and I was like, you want, you want to sit in? I'll take your picture. He's like, this is the best day of my life. I got to sit in a DeLorean. And so, believe it or not, that kind of thing happens nearly every time I take it out. There's someone who just gets super excited seeing this thing. I start to get, you know, invites to car shows to bring this thing. And uh, one of the car shows I got invited to was um, Caffeine and Exotics. And that was really unusual for me because I was thinking, oh, that's for Lamborghinis and Ferraris and high-end other cars, that kind of stuff. I get an invite and we bring the car in and, and park it. And it's crazy because all these guys that own Lambos and Ferraris are coming over to talk to me. And I'm sitting here going, my car costs less than your watch. <laughs> so that was that was really interesting to sort of come into that scene because, you know, I grew up in like the classic car scene, so it was neat to see the DeLorean kind of somewhere in the middle of the classic cars and exotics, which it, it kind of is. But one of the first times that um, I had met some other DeLorean owners, this was really interesting, was um, uh, another show, Caffeine and Octane. And um, this was, I think, the first long drive that I ever taken the car on. And so my dad and I were kind of nervous because we had pretty much put this car back together ourselves. And um, we get it out and driving it from Monroe all the way to Cafe and Exotics. And we'd actually were planning on meeting up with some other DeLorean owners and driving in together. Um, and this was, this would have been the first time I had seen other DeLoreans after I had bought my car. So I had just gotten so used to seeing my car. So we pull in, we're the first people there. Here comes three more DeLoreans driving in. And it was like I was looking at a mirror seeing my car because of course all DeLoreans look the same. And we get out and I made a bunch of friends that day and I'm still friends with these people. This was about maybe three years ago. And so we, we get all lined up and, and drive into Caffeine and Octane together. And of course there's like a, an announcer at Caffeine and Octane and he goes, he goes, look, there's a DeLorean. And then he goes, wait a minute, there's four DeLoreans. When do you ever see this? And we come in and park and we just get swarmed. And it was, it was so hard to, for me to get myself away from my car because you know everyone had just swarmed these cars. And I remember I, had, I was on the other side of Caffeine and Octane and there was this guy walking by on his phone going, did you see the DeLoreans? <laughs> so that was, definitely a, uh, that was definitely a lot of fun. Another cool story, this was, a, an, again, around the same time after I just got the DeLorean. I was still kind of getting used to the car and sort of the attention that it gathers. And um, I was in class one day, one of my engineering classes, and a lot of the professors, they tend to give out little note cards that say, you know, write down your name, write down where you're from, and write down a cool fact about you. So I wrote down, my name's Jace, I'm from Monroe, Georgia, and I have a DeLorean. And so I hand him the card at the end of class, and then the next day, this was the following Thursday, he starts up class, and then he holds up this card and he goes, who's Jace Delker? And I raised my hand and he goes, do you really have a DeLorean in front of all the class? And they're all looking at me and I was like, yes, sir, I do. And so, you know, in the middle, during class, we were kind of taking a break. He comes up to me and he says, um, Georgia Tech is looking for students to do sort of student profiles on, sort of promote the school, you know, a little mini advertisement, you know, talk about, your, talk about the car, talk about how that applies to your, you know, career path and that kind of stuff. Would you want to do that? And I was like, of course, I would love to do that. And so I'd actually got to meet some of the media people from Georgia Tech, and they came out with all their cameras and everything. We're recording this video. And two really funny things happened during that time. We were actually um, going to film the car, take some pictures of it with the Atlanta skyline in the background on top of one of the uh, parking decks. And DeLoreans conveniently are low enough to drive underneath the little sort of turnstile thing for parking decks. We were able to sneak it into this parking deck without having to pay for parking. And so we sneak it underneath, and then we go all the way to the top, and we park there. We're taking pictures for about 30 minutes, and then here comes an officer. Officer comes all the way up and then sort of parks and then backs in on the opposite corner and just sits there for about maybe three or four minutes while we're taking pictures. And me and the guy taking pictures, his name's Candler. We were looking going, what's he going to do? Is he going to tell us to get out of here? Is he, is he riding us up or something? What, what do we do? And then all of a sudden we hear the Back to the Future theme blaring over the PA system on this police car. And then he rolls on the window, waves at us, gives us a thumbs up and then leaves. <laughs> But overall, this car has definitely changed my life. This was exactly the car I was looking for. I can never see myself selling this car. And it's, it's just so interesting, the parallels between this car and my dad's car. I was 19 when I bought the car. My dad was 19 when he bought his 62 Corvette in 1981, the same year the car is. Both cars are from New York. And even weirder is the original owner of my dad's Corvette was the editor of Carcraft Magazine back in the 1960s. His name was Dick Day. And he was actually friends with John DeLorean. So if you go on Google and search pictures of John DeLorean, the first two that pop up is him and Dick Day together looking at a GTO when John DeLorean was, was head of Pontiac. Overall, it's, it's one of those stories where it could have turned into one of those shoulda, woulda, coulda stories where I had a chance to buy this car and I didn't. It's, it's really about taking a risk and just going for it sometimes. And that's what we did. And things really turned out 
really nice after that. I loved the way the Avalon King ceramic coating worked on my Porsche 993, so I was excited to try it out on my LP640. We put a clear bra on the car, but then on top of that, we put the ceramic coating to make it easier to clean. And after a 2,000 mile road trip, all the bugs just sprayed right off. It works great on my car, and you should try it on yours. So there's a link in the description below for a discount.